Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing fine. Uh, this is again a webinar uh, around Anubis, uh, specifically in those times where more and more uh, necessities show up to do uh, remote productions, virtual machines, and so on. So I was thinking that um, doing something specifically around that, as it starts to be used uh, uh, in some in some countries in some areas, it would be a good aspect because um, we're working hard already. It is implemented in some situation, and you will see that there will be few add-ons uh, in terms of the infrastructure uh, uh, to be able to make it even more compliant to a virtual machine and SD twenty one ten environment. Again, if you have questions, um, please use the chat. Or if there are remarks, if something goes wrong in terms technically, if uh, if you don't, if my, if my mic cuts or whatever it is, so just uh, uh, drop a message. Um, one thing I would like uh, to to say first and and and, and first of all, is that um, this is more an explanation about cases, about how to set up my device to work with the new functionalities as well, the newbies that comes, the new added options and so on. It is not specifically about how to uh, uh, how to set up or how generally speaking to manipulate my my Anubis. But if you have questions on that, please ask them. Or otherwise, you can also refer to other webinars that exist on that specific aspects. So um, to explain you what I have on my screen, obviously we have those this camera. I have here a real Anubis, but uh, to be able for the demonstration purposes and to have it easier on the screen you will see on the left side at the bottom it's basically of your screen it's basically an emulation uh, of Anubis so it's not a real one it's a software emulation this is why for example here where normally you have a triangle uh, it's, it's just this white button for example to toggle through my menus and so on um, for those who don't know it quickly we have here two speaker sets we have here what, two knobs because I can, I can assign them to many things, but the idea is to have two speaker sets. I have two headphones or one headphone and one cue, basically two headphone outputs that are available here on the front. And then in between all those soft knobs buttons, I have here a little dot with a microphone, a physical microphone in the Anubis, so that I can uh, use this as a talkback microphone, which I can uh, enable or disable here by pressing this soft knob button. So that's for the microphone or for the talkback rather. Then I have here a, a, a mute speaker. And here I have a big knob that is this knob there to, to turn to rotate for volume, for menus, for other things. But uh, here I will use the middle mouse button to do that. And then I have my touch screen and we're going to work on that. But first of all, look Let's look a little bit on the on the main screen here on the on the PowerPoint. Sorry, just above me there, uh, I have a few slides uh, where I wanted to uh, make it clear or make it clear. Try to 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 make it clear about what we can achieve with Anubis and what's gonna come actually in the coming weeks or months. So first of all, on the broadcast environment, you have more and more. Uh, remote productions uh, 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 with virtualized machines somewhere and we need to connect some hardware devices on that. Now, uh, these hardware devices like Anubis are necessary because at some point at an end there is still a human being, a journalist for example, or a set of journalists or guests and whatever. And on the audio side of it, what they would like is of course having no latency in what they hear or when they speak at the microphone. And so to be able to mix this together to monitor this without any latency. Uh, and this is what Anubis provides because we have some DSP inside that can achieve this type of things. Good, let me go to the next page. Um, this is today the normal, perhaps let's make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Uh, wait a second, I'm gonna do it like this and like this, and I'm gonna make myself smaller so that you can see all of this much better. There we go. I hope this is more convenient then. 
so that you can see how this works. Good. So this is typically a, a broadcast a, a remote production where you have on the audio side where you have the Anubis in the center. We have here an AS67 SD2110 stream uh, going to a switch somewhere, uh, a virtual machine or not. And obviously, uh, uh, we have use, usage of four analog outputs plus two headphone outputs that can be combined also to have a 5.1 output or 7.1 output for those working in, 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 uh, in surround production or immersive productions. And uh, you could have, um, each design is different, but this is where you would connect the speakers and or send the speaker somewhere to the, to the video people or whatever it is, it, it's required. And then on this side, you have the inputs. You have four analog inputs, two mic and two line, high resolution inputs. Uh, what is important to understand also, we're gonna see that, is that you can split the mic input and the line input to have a dual gain manipulation. So that means that uh, you could have a gain locally for the headphone, for example, but then uh, 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 the engineer that is that is sitting somewhere else or who receives this feed could also have another gain and change the gain because uh, um, he has perhaps a compression chain or an EQ chain that is different, and uh, and so he wants to or she wants to manipulate the gain differently. Then. We have, of course, two headphone speakers, uh, two headphone plugs, sorry, here. This is combined, of, obviously, these are combined. We have four analog main outputs, XLR and jack at the back. And then we have two jacks here in front. And this is when you want to go into surround, you have to use one of this output there and you can you can adapt the output gain so that it, it's, a, it's a line level for speakers and so on. Uh, and then you have this little talkback built in, what I was saying before. On the top of it, you have one GPIO in an output. It can be also uh, converted or changed. This is either or to a MIDI breakout, so you have MIDI in an output. But the GPI is very interesting if you still, it's useful sometimes, uh, some old style behavior with a light, for example, a red light or whatever. But it can obviously also be a foot switch if you want a GP in uh, to cut the microphone, for example, or to just switch on and off the talkback and things like that. And then very important, you have a remote control in terms of a web app. So it's basically the IP address of this device uh, via a standard browser, Chrome, Firefox, and so on, uh, where you can remote control what this device is doing. So that means that it, it, it can just be, for example, a very nice situation in the sense that um, you have the remote production and you have some accessibility over here, but you don't have all of it. You would need to toggle through the buttons to be able to have all of it. Now you can emulate it here, for example, to have the microphone inputs here, and then to have the monitoring there or vice versa. So you could put it next to each other with an iPad or whatever. And, and in terms of the ergonomy, you have everything under your fingers. So that would be the first kind of uh, 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 functionality. Now the second functionality is that, uh, again, this could be remote control from over here, from a person sitting somewhere else because it's a remote production. And on location, you only have a journalist or somebody that is not technically skill, skilled to change something. So this can be done, obviously, from a distance and adjusted if needed. Uh, it could be also just to recall a preset because somebody uh, uh, screwed up uh, some settings and you can recall a preset. So to make sure that um, the system works and is ready to work without the intervention, the physical intervention of, uh, of um, a technician. Good. Let me continue a little bit uh, to the next page. So this is new. And until now, we proposed, in terms of the connections for the driver, we proposed a, a NASIO driver for the PC world. Uh, which is obviously when we talk about virtual machines, that's what it is. But we do it also on the Mac side for the core audio and we do it also on the Linux side. Uh, and now we moved it further on the Windows side because uh, we encountered that um, as the Anubis is such a central piece because of its mixing capability and its monitoring, that uh, we need to 
provide, so to say, a backbone that can uh, import, I mean, receive rather, and, and send, if, if so to say, uh, multiple Azure streams and also media, Windows Media Player driver at the same time. And this is how we developed this uh, device here. Basically, sample rate and so on. But what is interesting is that you see that you can have uh, multiple channels that you can manage, go higher in sample rates as well. But this is for more for the music people. But then you can have a, a bridge channel. So it means that you can uh, a bridge in between Azure and in between uh, Windows Media Driver uh, signals and use them at the same time. So that means in a real environment, I could sit. Going back to this page, I could have my physical inputs coming from here, microphone, monitoring them over there, and then receiving whatever is required, for example, from the remote, I mean, from the studio, because I'm a, on a remote location. But at the same time, I would like to connect it to a computer from which I would, for example, stream some video that is on the web and mix it together in here. So this would be all possible with this uh, new driver that is still on beta version. It will be released soon, and it will give you, it will give a tremendous capacity uh, to to build up your your environment uh, locally on that aspect. So this is really a thing to look at uh, 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 precisely because uh, it it will really enhance even more. Your capable, your capacity, and your your possibilities that you are already able to do. And obviously, this brings me to the next step, where uh, we are working hard uh, to have our drivers deployable in uh, the virtual machine environments. We have a, we have already uh, a customer working with those drivers. They are not fully released yet, but they are tested thoroughly, and uh, we are ready to release them rather soon. So this is a very important point and aspect. Uh, then we're working hard on the support of the ST22, uh, sorry, 2022-7 uh, redundancy. On the, I'm talking here about the driver side huh? I'm, I'm, for the moment. I'm coming to the hardware in a second. Uh, so this is also very important that will be included. And we, we work also on the NMOS support. Um, this will also be included in our core audio drivers, the endless side of it. So this, these are very important uh, features for the remote production. Uh, and we're going to look into uh, specifically the redundancy one a bit further. This is, uh, these are our drivers that we have today on the core audio side on the left side, the Azure side on the right side. And basically uh, the Azure side will be, both will become NMOS. The Azure side will become uh, 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 redundant compliant, so with two IP addresses for to support the ST2022-7 uh, on that aspect. So let me go now onto the Anubis side and to show you a little bit how to set up those things. And let me go back to uh, to this one so that we are straightforward with this. So this is my Anubis site. And later on, I will show you, I have here a little browser that I opened up there. So this is how my, basically my, 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 uh, my Anubis is, uh, is, uh, is um, represented in the web browser. And this is here where I could choose another, for example, preamp page. So I have the preamps over here and so on. But let me hide this for the moment and let me go onto the main page there. So I have set up four streams for the moment. This is my microphone input, my two inputs. This is my instrument input, three and four. And I have now something coming in stereo from Studio One, whatever. And this is Obi-Wan 23 sending me a, a 71.4 stream. And I would have to listen to those to uh, mix them. And if I sum them already, I can mix them and, and put them the way up. But now, how do I set up the device to be able to work in this type of environment? So I go into settings. And if I go into general, um, first of all, I can here set up important things. The sample rate, first of all. Well, this is pretty clear that I will work normally in, in 48K. 
but obviously I can change it. Uh, sorry, there I go a bit down. And this is the first part that is very important and interesting to understand is that uh, I can go, of course, in AS6748 sample mode. This is the classic mode uh, that the machine or the device comes delivered into. Uh, but I can go into Ravenna, into 64 samples. But more important, I can go into lower uh, samples. This is to comply uh, when you have a big amount of switches in between and so on. So the ST2110 AS67 has introduced the possibility to have uh, uh, by by or, or to quarter depends which way you, you're going to look at uh, 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 the latency mode so that you can go into the very low latency mode of 12 samples in the a67 uh, so that your device can straight away work in this with an st2110 environment and then if i go a little bit lower here i can activate it as a tp ptp sorry master or not and then being master uh, or slave on that aspect. So if I'm now not master, it will then look for another device that provides the PTP so that uh, you can manage it typically on the remote side of it. And then a bit lower, this is now the IP address uh, that I can set up. So this is the Anubis with one uh, IP address. I'm going to come a little bit later to something a bit more. Here, one thing I want to say, I'm not sure I can change it. Yes, I can change it. If I go to manual, um, what is very important to understand is that, uh, and this is typically a problem that uh, some uh, uh, broadcasters run into because of the numbers of IP addresses they need, is that here in the subnet mask, I can actually change. I don't need to be with the number 255 each time. I can go into 254, 253, or whatever it is. And uh, so that I can demultiply the range of numbers of IP addresses. And this is something that is uh, uh, very appreciated on that aspect. Good. I go back from the settings and uh, meters, I don't have much to say or to explain. These are my presets. I have five presets. What is also important, I can save them locally, obviously, but I can also save them as a file. So to do, and this is again for remote production important, to do this, I go into my web page that is here. And I have here load presets and upload preset file. So uh, if I make this one a little bit bigger, uh, let me see if I do it just quickly like this. Here, this is where I can download and upload preset file. So it means I can uh, uh, bring them to, to to my computer or to my place and upload them again uh, in the sense that uh, I can do it remotely. And this is very important. And then this is how down here I set up my sources and my monitors. So there are other webinars and other uh, documents explaining all of that in detail. But this is just to click explain it quickly, this is where I go in an existing source or create a new source. But if I create a new source, source five here, I go in there. This is where I, if I give a name, I can change it. I say how many channels it is. So I, I say stereo, I can trim it. And here, this is where I can connect my physical inputs, either from the device, from the analog inputs from the device, or then below over the network, if something is connected over the network. This is about the sources. Same thing about the monitors. Basically, the monitors being outputs, either to speakers, to headphones. We have three types of outputs. Just to, to say it very clearly, speaker sets, headphones, and cues. So speaker set is more, it's, I mean, you can connect headphones to speaker sets if you want. It's more a criteria uh, in terms of a behavior uh, it's not necessarily always obligatory to connect a speaker to a speaker set. I'm giving one example. The Q, for example, is an output that I can use with different sources. So I can send different sources that are defined to this Q uh, and have several queues if I wish, then uh, what I will send to a headphone or to a speaker set. So that if I have a speaker sitting in a, in a booth somewhere, 
uh, or in the Obi van for the video guys, and I'm with my audio stuff, and they always want to hear only the commentary, nothing else. So I can set up a speaker for them with a queue uh, uh, and then send to them only this uh, voiceover or the commentary and nothing else. So it's totally independent from what I'm doing with my speaker sets and my cues. And then uh, again, stereo and so on, or, or all types of, sorry, all types of, of different uh, uh, speaker set environments, if we talk about speaker sets. And obviously you have the down mix going to the stereo for the headphones. And then you have the physical output or the network output. And very important, you have a delay, trim and EQ for each output. So it means you can, if you want also, uh, correct your room for this output in the sense that, um, I just have to do it like this, in the sense that uh, you would like to, to correct your room locally uh, moving from one area to another. Again, this is very useful in the remote production uh, environment. And below, you then have the behavior of the talkback uh, on, this, on this very monitor. Good. Sorry, taking a bit much more time than what I was wanting to. Then here you have audio inputs and, audio inputs and outputs. This is very important. That means, and there let me show you the behavior of it straight away. So this, are my, this is the remote control of my microphone uh, inputs of my Anubis. So if I make it a bit bigger, I see I have the faders here. I just make it smaller so I can present it better. Or let's, let's bring it over here so that you can see how this behaves like that. So this is my uh, remote control of the mic gain of my Anubis, right? I have input one and two, my microphone, input three and four, these are my jacks, and input, it's not input five, it's basically, this is my built-in microphone, the little one you have over there. What you see uh, moving here is an emulation. Uh, I'm on a web app emulator, so this is nothing real in terms of its input. And here, this is where you have the cough mute, for example, where you have the log phase invert and so on. Now, if I go into my audio input, as I explained before, I can split the remote control of the gain in terms of, um, of how, uh, how I can, uh, how can I say, uh, remote control those very inputs. So let me move it over here. And now I'm gonna split this gain and automatically you see that the same input here is now available there, but it just has a different remote control. Okay, and this is very important to understand. So basically, in the classic way, I have a front of house and I have an in-ear monitoring if we talk about live musical production. And in the broadcast environment, I could have the journalist's selection of its microphone uh, where he, he feels or she feels comfortable. And, uh, but then the engineer in the studio, uh, in, in, back in the, in the main studio, can have another gain uh, uh, selection on that. This is obviously available for the inputs one and two, and it's also available for the input uh, three and four. And this creates another stream with the same in with the same audio content with a different gain. So it means that uh, your 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 grid or your platform in terms of the IP streams you then have another one available, selectable, that you can connect to a different uh, route to be able to, or route rather, to route it in, a, in another way. So this is very important here. Then you have the triggers. This is how and what you set in terms of talkback and specifically also how you manage your GPIO. So uh, which, fu which function, uh, gets with what functionality and what trigger, uh, this type of things. Good. So this is a little bit what I wanted to explain in terms of the uh, uh, audio input, the dual game. One important thing that is interesting and important is that um, we have here, let me go back to this one. We have here, if I click a long time, so if I don't, I have my famous three pages 
where I have my sources, my monitors. Again, I'm not going through that because I explained it in other webinars. We have here my monitoring section with A, speaker A, speaker B, 5.1, speaker C, for example, it's a 7.1.4. With the top speakers, we have my headphone output and my queue that has a different selection of, uh, of sources than my speaker set, for example. Great. Uh, if I press for a long time on my monitoring, now I have the settings where I was before. I have a log file, which can be important and interesting in case of a mistake, error, or whatever it is. And we have the mic pre. This is basically the same emulation of what we have over here on this side. And then very important, we have, let me go back to that, missions. Now we are in the monitoring mission and I want to show you the network IO mission. So I have to restart the emulator. Yes. So it's restarting it and I have to go pick it up on my other screen and you're going to understand it in a second. What is the interest of it? As we have now our fantastic uh, journalist sitting in the uh, in the uh, on the remote production uh, he might or we might not want him or her to give um, all the functionalities so we have prepared them those functionalities but now clicking here we only have two accesses it's basically my sources and my outputs and my microphone input and that's it i mean what page one two and three and all the other functionalities have disappeared so this is basically to show you the adaptability or the possibility in terms also of the of the structure uh, of the menu so that we don't provide all the functionalities to the users okay so this is an interesting aspect to look at and let me go back to the monitoring mission so uh that we have the full functionality. I mean, to make it very clear, the functionalities are there. It's just that they are hidden in terms of the of the user interface for 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 the defined user. We are we want not to provide or to give an opportunity to screw up a, a, a recording or a session or a live transmission of a sports game, for example. Good. Let me go back to that. And let me bring this uh, a bit forefront here. This is now my microphone. And obviously, if I hide the preamps, I have the full, uh, as I was explaining before, I have the full capability of remote controlling my Anubis by selecting the different uh, cues, by uh, monitors, sorry, by selecting the different, the different sources, and by recalling, saving, uploading my different presets. Great. This brings me now to the right side here. I make this bigger again. And uh, this brings me now to uh, some interesting aspect of the next slide. Uh, let me just go back to where I was before. So in my Anaman, for those who are familiar with it, uh, my Anaman obviously will have this connection also available if you uh, enhance, for example, the dual gain possibility. So I will have then two inputs or two feeds from my Anubis that I connect to my computer VM or whatever it is. Uh, and this is what I wanted to show. We are now, uh, this is already in, I mean, under testing. It's not the final uh, release because uh, we, I mean, we have devices on the tests already, but, uh, uh, not in quantity for the moment. It is already available. It's the Anubis Merging SPS. Uh, and you can see here that we have now integrated two physical RG45 connectors so that you can connect two streams of AS67 SD2110 and obviously a full support dual wire of SD2022-7. Uh, so the functionalities are strictly exactly the same but uh, we now have the possibility to integrate fully in those uh, demands of virtual machine distance production broadcast production 
um, uh, with the compliance of the ST2022-7. Uh, and obviously our drivers, what I was explaining before, will then connect and be able to manage this. So before where I was showing where you have the IP addresses uh, in, my, in my Anubis emulator. So this is the same thing. Oops, sorry. Going back here in the settings into general and go down to IP. So now instead of having interface network interface one, I will have network interface one and interface two. So I will have my two different IP addresses from uh, if I connect it from my uh, first um, uh, uh, connector or my second connector. One important thing to mention as well is that um, you see it here is that uh, one, the first connector is also parallel over Ethernet. I mean, like we have it with our standard Anubis, this one is power is triggered now power over Ethernet. I have the first connector that is power over Ethernet and the second is not. So uh, that you can you can use it, but you still have the DC input on which you can have a redundancy if you have this one connected in terms of the power, the power supply. Great. So I think I kind of explained everything what I wanted to explain. I hope that is uh, uh, all clear. Um, if you have questions, please feel free. That's the moment or never. Um, otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to terminate it here. And um, yes, what, perhaps one last thing that is important. It's to say that uh, if you're interested in testing the Anubis uh, SPS, uh, you can do that. Uh, contact us. We have a few uh, uh, prototypes available. Uh, uh, some are ready in, 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 in testing environments by wood broadcasters. Uh, do so and uh, we'll be happy and pleased to have your comments, uh, feedback on that. Have a great day and talk to you soon.